I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. We're still here in St. George meeting just the most fabulous people. And so today we have David Mack, who's been willing to share his story. And thanks for coming. And sure. This is really exciting. And he has such an interesting bunch of little stories to tell us. I'm excited <laughs> to hear them. But uh, just to find out a little bit about you, where were you born? Uh, Everett, Washington. Ever, up in Everett, huh? Okay. Yeah. And mom and dad, were they members of the church um, back then? My mom was, and I believe my dad was baptized shortly after they were married. Oh, okay. But he wasn't okay. practicing. Yeah. Were you active then as a child up there? Oh, I, we only lived there until I was uh, two and a half. Okay. My father died in a car accident. Oh, gosh. Then we moved to southern Utah. Wow. Is that where your mom had been from? Yeah, she, she was from, from Cedar. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how many children do you, or uh, siblings do you have? I have one, well, one sister yeah. with, with her and my, my father. Yeah. And then I have uh, two stepsisters and a, or I'm sorry, half, half sisters and a half brother oh, okay. from her second marriage. Okay. And then a whole slew of step <laughs> that I don't really count because. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of the family. Part of the family. <laughs> so do you, were you, do you remember being much in the church at this point? And oh, were yeah, we were, we were church? active, and, yeah. you know, like everybody. Yeah. You know, we, we, well, we came to Cedar when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, kind of Kanab and Cedar with my grandparents. We okay. kind of followed them around a little. Oh. Um, and then when I was five or six, we moved to Provo. Okay. Uh, now, you've got an interesting story that relates to your baptism at age eight. Tell me about that, or tell us about it. Well, I, I'd, um, <clears throat> you know, going through the process of being, you know, getting ready to be baptized, yeah. and the interviews, and, and everybody's all excited and everything, and at one point I asked my mom, I says, well, what if, uh, what if I say no? <laughs> you know, because everybody keeps asking me if, I, if, if I'm ready, if I'm prepared, if I understand what I'm doing, yeah. and... Uh, <laughs> I, her response, just just instantly, I, I realized I'd kind of said this the wrong thing. <laughs> who, who, who says this at eight years yeah, old? Yeah, who says huh? eight years old? So I uh, dialed that back, you yeah. know, and, and you know, and, and then then at that time, you know, I just I, I was just curious. It's like, you know, what if what if I say no? What, what's, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just kind of <laughs> went along with the program. Right. I, I, I think I at the time I was still. Really enthusiastic about the whole process. But you were a thinker of some sort, by, even back at age eight, it sounds <laughs> yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. So then you get into age, age 12, I guess, you get into scouts and yeah, scouts, priesthood that was, and all that stuff. Yeah, that was great. Priesthood. Yeah. Uh, um, Take seminary, did you? Yeah, in fact, uh, in high school, I was a, uh, a seminary class president at one point. Oh, okay. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. So do you feel like you felt like the church was true? I mean, you must have believed that it was well, I, the only true church. I, I started having questions. You know, one thing, growing up in Utah County, you don't have much exposure. But I was a paper boy, and I read the paper every day. And so I got outside of Utah. I got information, information outside. from okay. outside, you know. Uh -huh. And I, I started thinking, it's like, you know, the... The Mormon Church or the LDS Church is, is this big, but there's all these other faiths, these other people that have beliefs. Yeah. Are they all wrong? Well, you thought they were, didn't you? <clears throat> well, I wondered. I, I wondered about that. <laughs> yeah, they're all you know, lost. And yeah, they, and I, I thought that's a, that's that's a terrible thing. Mm. You know, and as God, how how can God God judge them if they have sincere faith? In, in their beliefs, if they're going forward with their beliefs and it's sincere, how does, does he judge you how on does that? that work? Or yeah. does he judge you because you didn't go to the temple? And oh. you know, so I guess I, that was like the inkling. 
you know, I, I started kind of questioning that. Uh, you know, when I was memorizing the 13 Articles of Faith as well, and I started realizing that some of these, the articles that we claim as basis of our religion, this is what we believe, this is how, you know, mm -hmm. our, our, our mission statement, as you were. Right. And I'd seen plenty of examples growing up of people who ignored those or, uh, you know, weren't living, weren't them living well. those. Well, you mentioned uh, <laughs> number 11, where we believe everybody should have the right to worship in their own way. And, and, then, and then what do we do is we, we sit around and we criticize everybody else's faith. <laughs> right. You know, you, oh, you have the right to believe the way you want to believe, but I'm going to tell you how, why you're wrong. Yeah. You know, and then we send out missionaries to tell them they are wrong. They are wrong, yeah. yeah. So, and where the true church is. I think, I, I think that's kind of when I, 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 I started to have sliding my foot out the door. Oh, really? You know, um, when I became a new Christian, the, the gentleman who invited me to Bible study the first time was a friend of mine from high school. Now, how old was you, were you at this point? When I when started, you started Bible yeah, study? Yeah, when he came. 45. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So what happens in between, say, real quick, between high school and, and 45? I had decided, <laughs> I had decided that any, any faith, any religion that man had gotten its hands on was corrupt. So once man got a hold of it, they that corrupted it. That makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, it, well, it sounds like it. And I still do believe in some degree that people get a hold of religion and they twist it to, to fit themselves. Yeah, to, to, their to, way of thinking. Or, or they have an agenda. Sure, right. Um, and he kept in, he, he, re, he, he got in contact with me. I hadn't and this is an old high school friend? An old high school friend, yeah. We were running buddies. Yeah. And now, was he Mormon? I'm sorry. He was. was he? he was. Okay. And he had left the church. Oh, okay. Uh, a couple years before that, before he got in touch with me. Yeah. And he kept inviting me. And I was like, nah. To go to church. Yeah, go to church. And I'm like, nah, I'm not interested. You know, I'm happy. I'm not interested. <laughs> and he says, well, come to Bible study. And I think he offered to buy me breakfast or something. <laughs> and... It just was, innocent enough to go it, to a Bible. You believe the Bible. I mean, Mormons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe the Bible. Well, something, something, some, some, to some to extent. To some extent, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a whole other. That's another that's story. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I came. Uh, I didn't have a Bible in the house. You didn't even have one. So I ran down to the Barnes and Noble and just basically bought the first Bible off the bookshelf <laughs> that looked interesting. I, I liked the cover. I think yeah. that's why. Yeah. Uh, I bought an American Standard yeah. Bible. Um, and I started attending Bible study with him. Uh, it was Wednesday morning. I wasn't working Wednesday morning, so I didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> um, and I started hearing about grace. I started hearing these messages from the Bible. And I, I remember growing up, you know, we did Bible study all the time. We studied the scriptures all the time. And I'm, well, I'm Sunday sitting... Sunday school and seminary. Sunday school and seminary. Sure. And yeah, yeah. And I'd actually uh, done a lot of that on my own. Just because I had questions, I had, I had read the, Bi the Book of Mormon and the Bible on my own. Yeah. Um, but I'm sitting there in this in this class, and I'm I didn't know that. I'd never heard that. I've never, or I've never looked at it through that in that perspective. Yeah. You know. You didn't understand what grace meant. For like no. You said. No. No. Yeah. Um, and then I started seeing, you know, in the LDS Church, there's they they they, they cherry pick scriptures to support their. Their faith. They certainly do out of the Bible. That's out of the sure, Bible. Yeah. And then I read, I just happened to flip open the Bible one day at random and I read Titus. 3.5? 3.11? Okay, anyway, that's the only three, one. 3.9. And t Paul, <laughs> tells, Paul tells him, uh, don't worry about fr frivial things, don't worry about genealogies. Don't waste your time on genealogies. Boy, did that hit you? Yeah. And I, I went to the guy that was leading my Bible study and he says, is this, what is this does this mean what I think it means? And he says, oh yeah. And he sent me page after page of supporting scripture. And I, I thought, why, how come nobody ever talked about that in church? Genealogy is just the most important thing we do in the LDS yeah, it's church. big up How there, come nobody ever, history, nobody yeah. ever, how they ignore this? Yeah. Um, I even uh, tracked down a LDS by a, a, a quad and looked it up in there, and there it is, in there. Yeah. I was like, how come nobody ever brings that up? You know, how come they don't at least argue you about it? You made sure that scripture in Titus was in your scripture? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. 
So yeah, who uh, put that scripture there? Right, yeah. who put that there? Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I started coming to Bible study. I think I'd done that for about six months. Yeah. Uh, and then I thought, he kept inviting me to church. And, you know, I had a bad taste in my mouth about church, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says, no, it's only like, uh, it's only an hour. And, you know, it's not three hours. Yeah. And it's not. So I started coming. And my first, this is, my first Sunday that I came to church, um, I was sitting in the back, back of the sanctuary. Right. Kind of on my own, and uh, everybody stands up in there. They start singing, and I, I see a few people around raising their, raising their hands. And I'm I'm watching them, and I'm, I'm thinking, what, what is this about? You know, I've never seen this before. And there's a lady up the aisle from me, and she's got her hands up. And this guy comes trotting up the aisle, and he hands her a cup of coffee. And I thought, they've got coffee service here. It's like, and you know, it's like. How do you know? How does he know how much cream and sugar you want? You know, I, I found out later it was his her husband. Oh, <laughs> she was just bringing she, it whether she was, had her hands up yeah. or not. But you know, you I thought that was a coffee signal. A coffee I'll, signal. Take, I'll take a coffee. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. But they were praising Jesus, weren't they? They were. Yeah. And uh, isn't that a joyful? Yeah. Thing. Uh, the just uh, I was over at. Uh, the Calvary Chapel a couple weekends ago had a men's conference. Yeah. I attended over there. And during the conference at one point, there were, I think it was probably about 400 men were singing together. You know, and I, I felt, you know, I felt emotion. I, I felt really moved. It's yeah. one of the first times. That you really felt. Felt that. You know. Well, there is such a, and there's such a freedom and joy in, in knowing who Jesus is. And yeah. Did you ever sense that as a, Mormon, or even during those period of years that you were, I, I, you probably always just believed the church was true. If you ever went back to church, it would be a Mormon, right? Did you ever think that? No, I was never going to go back to the oh, church. Okay, even during that period, period after high school. Yeah, so, no, I, okay. Yeah, I was done. putting words in your mouth. Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's fine. But that's, I mean, people. I mean, the sense is that people. That. Yeah, uh, well, if I ever go back to church, it'll be a Mormon. I'll just get things worked out, and I'll get back to church. But, well, this, praise God for this man that would, what had contacted you. And that, was that out of the blue? Did he feel inspired? What, did he ever explain why he called you? I don't know. I think he just tracked me down. He, in fact, he tracked my wife down because I wasn't on Facebook. He, he tracked mm -hmm. my wife down on Facebook and asked her. He must, he, being Christian, he felt like he had a message that, that you, you would enjoy, and, mm -hmm. and you certainly did, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so you uh, attend church, and then what happens? Uh, yeah, I start attending church. I start making friends and uh, getting to know people. Yeah. And um, building relationships, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, at, some, at one point, uh, we were in church, and they were talking about baptism. Ah. They were announcing baptisms. They were right. going to do baptisms. And so I... <laughs> felt really moved, really, you know, to do that. So I went and spoke to the associate pastor, and uh, you know, you know, they have certain criteria. Not a lot, but you know, they want you to be attending for oh. at least a year and oh. and things like that. And and uh, <laughs> you know, it was a, it was a, it was a moving experience for me. I but felt something you were choosing, as opposed to this eight-year-old experience. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And I, yeah. and I and I. Uh, yeah, when I was baptized at eight, I felt like it was just something. It's just something you do, and then again, where you're talking about works versus grace, right? And I was I was doing my checklist. Yeah, you were doing your work. I was doing my work. Yeah, you know, where being baptized at age forty-five or whatever it was, it that, was my choice. that was grace and, yeah. uh, and accepting Jesus. Uh, yeah, and yeah. then uh, um, about a year, not quite a year later, my wife decided to. Yeah, tell us about that because you were saying that she had observed a difference in her husband. Yeah, well, you know, I was doing this, this, I was going through this whole process, the Bible study and coming to church on my own. Yeah. She, she wasn't rejecting it, but she wasn't interested. She wasn't raised in any religion oh. uh, at all. Okay. And so she wasn't really interested. But she saw me change. She saw, you know, I, I used to have a temper and I still do a little bit, but... Um, I was real negative. Um, I just 
and she saw me. She said, she, said, she told me, she, you know, I, I've seen you, you're less angry, you're, you're more at peace, she goes, you're more positive. Wow. You know, uh, I started doing some, some volunteer work through the church. Yeah. I joined Gideon's International. Yeah, well, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but keep going on with your wife. Well, anyway, um, so she started attending church with me. She said, you know, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start coming to church with you. <laughs> and we've been probably going, she'd probably been coming to us about eight months, and they announced baptisms. And she says, you know, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to talk to the associate Were pastor. you surprised? Pleased, I'm sure. Yeah, I was pleased, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I didn't want to pressure her. Cause, no. You know, and growing up, just feeling that pressure all the time. You didn't want to. I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she went to talk to the pastor, and, um, and he asked her why she was interested. And she says, because I, I have seen my husband change. She says, I've seen him grow. Wow. You know. That's terrific. And uh, he told her, he said, well, he said, uh, he says, this interview is just a formality anyway because I know your husband. And <laughs> you're, if, you're, if you're, you know, you're, you're his wife and if you're <laughs> wanting to be baptized, then yeah, that's just good enough for me. Yeah. You know, so. So she was baptized. She was baptized. Just because she saw the, see, that's what the Spirit does, don't you think? It's just uh, well, Christ that, in you. It's, uh, they tell us that all the time. You know, we yeah. lead by example. Yeah. You know. Well, you mentioned Gideon's Bible, and I think we sure. should spend a little bit of time on that. You're actually a presenter. Now, anybody that's been to a motel or a hotel knows that there's a Gideon Bible, and this is what you do here locally and yeah. in this area, in this Mesquite, southern Utah area. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. So tell us about that and what, what it's about. Um, well, maybe just real quickly, what, what, when did Gideon start and all that? Uh, oh, okay. Because you um, do present. Uh, yeah, I do. Make presentations, I do yeah. Uh, the Gideon started in 1898. Two gentlemen met in a hotel. And over the, the course of the night, um, they, they, they decided that they were going to try and place a Bible in every hotel in, in the country. Just one per hotel yeah. was the initial goal. Well, they were exanging this Bible back and, back forth, and forth, right? And yeah. thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice if there was a Bible <laughs> in each available. hotel? Yeah. yeah. And then over the next 20 years, as they worked towards that, um, gathering resources and, and, and whatever, uh, it turned into every hotel room. Yeah. And then hospitals, prisons, military installations. I'm sure everyone's heard the story about the guy with the Bible, you know, stopping a bullet or whatever. Yeah, and Nine yeah. times out of ten, that's a Gideon Bible. <laughs> of <course>. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, do, I do presentations. I speak in churches to raise money to buy the Bibles. 100% of the money we don't, that is donated goes, goes, to that, goes to buying Bibles. The administrative costs are paid by us, the members. Just a volunteer. Our dues, the dues we pay every year. Yeah. Um, and then I also am in charge of Bible distribution in this area. What a fantastic outreach that that Gideon Bible. I imagine there's just stories, people laying in bed in motels and grabbing that Bible. and Because the, the Word of God's powerful, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And it, it tends to speak to people. You know. Is there anything you could share that you've run across? Any little... Anecdotes well, or something? Well, or? yeah, I have plenty, but uh, I have a person, one that's personal. Uh, 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 um, a lady I met, I work with actually, at a, I work at a drug and alcohol rehab. Oh. Um, she just recently celebrated five years of sobriety. Wow. Um, but she had been, she left Oregon to come to Utah, basically running from the Department of Family Services or looking to take her children oh. because of her alcoholism. Oh, boy. Um, she came to Southern Utah and she checked herself into a program uh, and then shortly after was asked to leave because of some decisions that she made. Mm-hmm. Um, really struggling. <laughs> yeah, really struggling. Yeah. Well, the, the day that she left the program, her husband left her. The state took her children oh, no. and the friend, the one friend that she had she could count on for a bed or a, a couch a place to stay. To, uh, turned her away. Oh my goodness. So she found herself in a hotel room with a cu- enough money for a couple nights. And she told me, she was, I was sitting there, and she was, I didn't know what to do. And I opened the drawer and found the Bible. Gideon's Bible. The Gideon's Bible. And in the front, you know, it talks about, are you feeling hopeless? Are you feeling suicidal? Are you feeling despair? Yeah. And she goes, and I looked those up. I read those scriptures. And she goes, and then I turned the page, and, you know, I, I found hope. And... Christ. 
just just by opening up the book. And she took she took that with her, and she went back to the program, and they let her back in. Yeah. And she completed the program. She didn't get her children back. Yeah. But um. But five years. But of five sobriety. years of sobriety, and she's sharing that message of hope and strength. Oh, that's so fantastic. And she still has that Bible. <laughs> she, I'll bet she does. Yeah. Wow, so. there's probably so many stories like that of people that have uh, been despondent and that Bible is just, because the Word of God, like we said, is powerful and it uh, it testifies of Jesus as God. And yeah. uh, does I guess Jesus means a little differently to you now than he did as a growing up as a Mormon. <laughs> well. You know, I, I remember one time being with someone, and they were talking. It was around Easter, and they're talking about Jesus' sacrifice. This and they, back when you were younger. When I was younger, and they yeah. got choked up. Yeah. And I remember looking, thinking, "Well, what, you know, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Why, what are you getting all choked up about?" Because it wasn't about Jesus. It was about Joseph Smith. Oh. It was about the Book of Mormon. Yeah. You know, bearing uh, their testimony or something about that. And it, uh, it, even now at work, when I do work, when I work Sundays, we we take the clients to church. Depending on on what Sunday it is, we go to different different churches, and then who wants to go? And so, even to Mormon churches. Yeah, and, LDS and occasionally churches. we'll go to a Mormon church. Yeah, because they're LDS yeah, and they want to go there. Yeah, okay. or, or they're curious. So you go with them. Yeah, and I I tell you, I I go to these Mormon churches and I sit there and we went on a fast and testimony meeting, <laughs> and. I didn't hear once Jesus. Not Except once. in the name of at yeah, the end of the Yeah, exactly. The but it's, I believe in Joseph Smith, I believe the Book of Mormon's true. You know, these kids get up and you know the kid the, the oh, kid testimony. Right. I love my mom and dad. I know Joseph Smith is a prophet. I, I love the, the Book of Mormon's true, the church is true. And, you know, boom. Know but n- nothing about Jesus. Yeah. You know, and it's it, it And yet and yet they think they do. Yeah, I mean, they give if it you were to say to Mormons, gee, you know, you don't really talk about Jesus. Oh, yeah, we do all the time. But they really don't. They don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the Book of Mormon is supposed to be another testament of Christ. Right. But it's, you know, yeah. it's not. Uh, and, of course, we could probably do a two-hour thing about the Book of Mormon. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all the different things. You probably know more now about Mormonism. You've probably studied a little more. Yeah, I, I, more you know, I've read the CES letter and, yeah. and some of the other other things. things that, yeah. I, I also, I, I, the, the further I've gone, I've grown too, the less I'm inclined to, to get involved in stuff like that. I don't think it's productive. You know, I, I do think the positive, you're saying that the positive is more powerful. Yeah, than better. to criticize, you know, and yeah. you're not going to share a message with somebody by criticizing their faith. That's true. Or putting out what's wrong with You'll it. You put them on the defensive. And yeah. So do these people ever, that are in these programs, do they ever sense your, or you're probably not allowed to really be too vocal about where oh, you're I, at? I can, I can. Yeah. You know, I, in fact, I share Gideon Bibles at work all the time. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, and I lead a ministry here, a 12-step Bible study. Oh. Uh, there's a, a Celebrate Recovery Bible that has the 12 steps in it, supported by Scripture. Oh, I see. Um, and, I, and I share that at work. Who's done that? Um, it's a ministry out of Arizona, I think. Oh, is it really? It's a, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting Bible, especially for that group For that group of, for that people, group of yeah. people, yeah. Now, one thing I did want to have you make mention is that when the Gideons use their Bible, it isn't actually a Gideon's Bible. I mean, they no. use King James. Yeah, and, King James and the and other English Standard Version. Yeah. Right. So uh, it's not that they've created their own Bible. No. Right. I mean, they're using... Yeah. Uh, uh, authorized versions of, of the Bible, yeah, yeah, including yeah. King James. So yeah. I want to mention that. I'd forgotten that. So. That's why we don't present to the LDS. No. Okay. Do your family, uh, as you have, how, how do they feel about you? Have they have they observed a difference? I guess in your. No, I, I don't interact don't with my so. family very much anymore. Over religion, do you yeah, think it is? Yeah, pretty much. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Unfortunately, my my sisters. The, the interesting is my sisters and brother are all have all left the church. Oh. Um, and my kids, I, I didn't raise my children in any faith. Yeah. So they're kind of, I've been 
working on them a little bit, you know, sharing my message. And stuff. Don't you wish this had, I mean, not, I mean, it's all in good, God's hands and timing, yeah, yeah. but wouldn't it have been nice to have had this happen more in your 20s or something? Yeah, that? when I had a little more influence on my kids. Yeah, yeah, they're all in their 20s well, now. Well, sure, right. And, 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 and then just having that joy and peace your whole life instead of, like, but, yeah. but better late than never, obviously, in God's hands. In it, and it's done that way for a reason, I guess. Right. But, yeah. Well, and, and, and they've seen the change in me. Oh, I'm sure. You know, and, and so I think that, again, with, like, like with my wife, you know, yeah. I'm just kind of leading by example. And, yeah. and, uh, well, again, just a, it's gone, our time goes quickly, but what would you want to say to your family, your friends, and those that care about you, maybe you're still in the church and so on, what would you say? Well, I, you know, I'm happy. You know, uh, you know, I know I'm I'm not lost, and I feel like I've gained more than anything else. Yeah. And you know, with what I've gained and the information, the the, the knowledge I've gained and everything, I, I'm I'm helping other people. I'm I'm out there volunteering. I've never done that in my life. Volunteered. <laughs> You know, volunteered my time to help other people. Would you have ever thought you'd be doing no, what you're doing? No, in fact, we were laughing about that earlier. Yeah, in fact, weren't we? Tell uh, us. last last a couple of weeks ago, I was in Mesquite doing a presentation at a Presbyterian church. Yeah, and afterwards we were leaving for lunch, and my wife turned to me and she said, <laughs> "A couple of years ago, somebody would have told me you'd be speaking in front of a church." She was, I thought they were crazy. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. But that's what the and you feel like there's just a joyous message that we want people to kind of come to know and, yeah. and read and study the Bible. I, what do you think it is that the Mormons most misunderstand about Christians and Bible and Jesus? What do you, do you have a thought well, I think on they that? Fall into the, I think they fall into the, uh, the they get the, the hubris, yeah. that they have the, the message yeah. and that everybody else is wrong. Yeah. You know, that the Bible's corrupt. I, and I hear that all the time, that the Bible is corrupted. Yeah. You know, it was mistranslated and mistakes were made. Do you ever ask them, well, which parts are? Or can you show yeah, me? Well, what? yeah, and they can't, yeah, they can't do that. And, yeah. And then, uh, of course, I've taken the classes here that, that prove that's all <laughs> false, yeah. you know. And, but I believed that for a long time. That's why I didn't read the Bible in my 20s and 30s, because I, I had that thought. Had it in you know, the back of your mind. Well, is, well, you'd memorized the Articles of Faith, so yeah. you knew that number eight told you that it wasn't trustworthy, right. basically. And, 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 and uh, unfortunately, the logic, the argument they use to prove that is logical. Yes. When you have men, you know, we have people handwriting. Well, you know that, yeah. You know you it know. has been translated, obviously. Yeah. And so, but you know. it, uh, well, David, thanks so much for your sharing your story, and sure. what a joyous message, and and how the how God has come into your life and and your wife who would know better that, to to observe those changes and to then now now she's following Jesus and uh, I'll bet you're thrilled with that aren't you yeah yeah <laughs> thanks for joining us here on the ex mormon files and we'll see you next time